Hello guys, welcome to another book review. I've read a ton of books since I made the last video, but uh, really one stands out and it's this one. Now it's not really a book, it's more a collection of speeches by Charlie Munger, who is the uh, business partner of Warren Buffett. He's less famous than him. He's 92 years old now. It's a very unwieldy book really. It's, <laughs> it's really annoying format and I had to order it from England. And it cost me a hundred bucks to get it sent here, but you don't have to get the book. Many of his uh, speeches are online and you can find them there for free. And I'll put a link in the description if I can find them. His main ideas are that you need to figure out where all of the mental models are from the different disciplines. A discipline being as an example physics or psychology or economics or mathematics. And you need to figure out all of those mental models. And by mental models, it just means the basic ideas, the main ideas from those different fields. And then you need to apply them in your decision making. And he's saying that if you don't know basic probabilities and apply them in your daily life, you're like a one-legged man in an ass-kicking contest. And that's going to end badly for you. Another thing he says is invert, always invert. And he picked that up from mathematics as a famous mathematician that said that all of the time. And what that means is thinking through problems in reverse and we'll get back to that. But let's uh, look at the mental models first. What does he mean by that? And what benefit can you possibly get from applying that? Now, I didn't really understand what he meant at first when I read this. And it, it dawned on me all of a sudden what he meant. And then I started applying it all of the time. And I think it's a very powerful tool. It's not a magic bullet, but it certainly will help you make better decisions. So let's take our down to earth example and work through it. So let's say we want to start a YouTube channel and we haven't done anything yet at all. So what's the probability that we'll be successful with that? Well, first let's define the goal. Let's say we want to make a hundred thousand dollars a year and we want that to replace our normal job. And that's very black and white. We'll consider everything less than $100,000. That's a failure. And everything above that is a success. And we'll figure that maybe 1% of all content creators on YouTube make that kind of money. It's probably around 1%. I don't know the actual number, but that would be my guess if I had to guess. So our probability, having done nothing yet except sat down and gotten the thought that we want to make a YouTube channel is 1% and we have a 99% chance to fail at reaching our goal. So now we get down to business and we make, let's say 15 videos and we put them online and, and people start watching them or not watching them. And we pick up 20 subscribers and we look at the numbers and we think to ourselves, well, there's nothing here that indicates that we have any kind of talent for this. So uh, our probability is certainly not increased. It might even have decreased. So we crank out another 150 videos. Now we spend a considerable amount of time doing this. And now we're up to 200 subscribers and that still does not indicate that, that we will hit our goal at all. So we can't be certain that we cannot be successful. Of course, we might continue to make videos. We might get better and that might increase our likelihood. And it might actually happen in the same way that you could tell a kid who has no aptitude or talent for basketball that if he practices enough, he might play in the NBA. We're not going to hold our breath for that. But we can never have certainty. And that's what John Maynard Keynes said, you know, you, you have degrees of belief in the outcome in the future. You can never be certain about it. So I might be if, have a strong belief in the certainty that the sun will rise tomorrow and I'll be alive tomorrow. And I'll have a lot less belief uh, or strength in the belief that I'll be alive in maybe, uh, let's say, 70 years. And I might have no belief at all in the fact that I'll be alive in 100 years. But we can never be certain. It might happen. They might come up with some medical stuff that will make that happen anyway. But we can have degrees of belief in the outcome of the future. And now we applied basic probabilities to our chance of successfully reaching our goal. But we didn't apply any other mental models. This one is obviously basic mathematics that you picked up in high school. So let's uh, see what we can do with psychology. And uh, we already sunk, I don't know, a ton of time into the YouTube channel that we created. And we created tons of videos. 
And now uh, we have a little bit of a loss aversion because we don't want to stop because then we would have lost all of the time. We consider it a failure and accepted that failure. So we maybe have a psychological bias to keep going, to keep cranking them out and see if we can make it. So we haven't uh, just wasted all of our time and effort. So now we have that maybe clouding uh, our judgment, our objective judgment of the uh, probabilities for our success. And that would be importing a, a mental model from psychology to evaluate what's going on right now in the decision that we are making to either continue or doing something else. Now we could also use the, the probabilities here to say that we should do something else. Maybe we should create uh, kids videos <laughs> with tractors in them <laughs> and, and kids songs in the background. Maybe that would have a higher probability of reaching a goal of $100,000 a year. We could also do something entirely different. We could create a web shop and sell coffee. So it's a tool in the decision making. We just applied uh, basic probabilities to uh, how our, our degrees of belief in whether or not we would be successful with an outcome in the future. And we applied a mental model from psychology. We could also go to biology. And this is a mental model that's um, kind of sifted into uh, economics as well. It's regression to the mean. So let's say we made two videos and they both got 10 million views between them. And then we would say, that's pretty cool, that's very extreme. And we would expect that to regress to the mean. So we would expect the next videos that we make to be less successful. But we don't know how less successful or when it will happen. We don't know where the mean is, it might fluctuate. The mean might also have shifted upwards, so we would have a higher mean. But we, it is still useful to know that it indicates that it, we will regress to the mean and it might, uh, might decrease with the views going forward. It's the same thing with the stock market. When you hear people saying the stock market is high, it should come down some. What they mean is it's, it's extreme. It should regress to the mean. They don't know when it'll happen. They don't know where the mean is. It might fluctuate. They don't know where it'll settle. It might have moved up. So it's really not at all any kind of accurate prediction of anything, but it's still a mental model to keep in your mind. So now we've applied uh, mathematics, basic probabilities. We've applied uh, psychology. We borrowed something, something from that and we've applied a little bit from biology and perhaps phys physics. You could also look at chain reactions and stuff like that and, and think about how one video might uh, set off a chain reaction or something like that. So in the end, what you might end up with if you're trying to work through something complex. Now this was a fairly simple black and white problem with the YouTube channel because we defined the, uh, the goal so simply. Of course, might be all kinds of other uh, things that you may, might take into account, like you might enjoy making the videos and you might consider it a hobby and you might just uh, feel creative when you do it. So our goal was very black and white, but let's move on now because we would like to look at the decision trees where you apply probabilities to all of the possible outcomes. And I used this recently. I have a friend that called me and he said, uh, Klaus, I got sued. And we worked through the uh, possible outcomes, what the probabilities would be that we would win, that we would lose, what uh, the probabilities would be that the, the one suing would uh, accept a settlement. And we worked out how much time he would have to spend on the actual case. And we got the lawyer to estimate the probabilities of winning and losing in court and how long it would take and the, and the bill from the lawyer. And we worked through all of that applied uh, probabilities to all of the decisions and we decided to first send him a settlement offer um, which we thought was uh, reasonable for us to remove the uncertainty from the equation and get rid of uh, all of that so we could be certain of the results that would cost us x amount of dollars and he did not accept that offer. And then we uh, looked at the probabilities and we said, that's fine. We, we are going to court. We think we'll win anyway. And we have high probability to win. So we're not going to offer anything else any more than what we already did. So that's decision trees. And I think they teach that at business school. But it looks like a tree and every branch will be a decision and we work out the probability for that and we'll think through all of the mental models that you have acquired from the different fields, like the psychological ones. Let's say you're selling a house and now we get back to the thinking in inverse, you know, where you look at it from the other side or think through the problem in reverse. That's also what Charlie Munger says. So let's say you're selling a house 
and you think it's worth X amount of dollars and you have your counterparty on the other side, the seller, and you think through the problem from his side and you say, what does he think it's worth? So he says it's worth this amount of dollars. Maybe he's biased a little bit by a, by a mental model. <laughs> he's attached to the house, so he might have a, a higher valuation that it, than what it's worth on the market. So you figure out what it's worth for him and what he might like and how you might be able to strategize. He might want to get paid real quick because he's already bought another house and so forth. You look at it from his side of the equation. Another way to think through a problem in reverse or invert, as Monka says, is if you think about you would like to have a, a great marriage. How do we have a good marriage? If you think about it that way, we might say we need to pay attention to our wife. We need, need to provide for her. We need to give her gifts and kiss her at night. And you might arrive at that kind of stuff. But if you invert it and say, how can I fuck up my marriage? <laughs> you will think about it in a different way. You might say, all right, so I cheat on her. That'll fuck it up real well. Or I just ignore her when I get home from work because I'm too tired. I ignore the kids. I ignore everything. I'm too stressed out. So now you arrived at some different answers to the same thing because you asked it in a different way and looked at it from a different angle. So that's a very powerful tool as well. So how do you go about picking up all of these mental models? Well, there really is no easy way to do it. You're just going to have to read a lot of books, talk to a lot of smart people and figure out what the basic ideas are from all of the different disciplines that uh, exist in academics and science and see if they apply to, uh, to the problems and the decisions that you go through. But you can always start with the, the basic probabilities. And of course, it's not a magic bullet because you cannot know for certain what will happen. That's what John Maynard Keynes says. You can have degrees of belief. And it's the same thing if you were, if I came to you or you came to me with a startup idea. You said, Klaus, I have a great idea for a business. Will you lend me some money? and you had done nothing yet, then I would say your probability of success is extremely low. For it to be a great monetary success, it might be 1%. Uh, for you just to make enough that you can make a living from it, it might be, uh, be higher. But it's still going to be an awful bet to take for me. So I would absolutely not lend you any money or invest anything. But if you came to me and you already had some customers and you already had some numbers and you already had a website and it was already going a little bit you've been doing it for four months then we would look at the numbers and i might change my mind about the probabilities and we would look at what the growth might be and the potential and then we would try to get a valuation for it and we would say all right it might be worth this right now uh, because it has a higher probability of success i'm willing to invest so i'll invest this amount of money and i'll pay you this amount for X amount of percent of the uh, ownership of the business. So it's the same kind of thing. It, it always returns to the basic probabilities and what you think. And of course, it's not a, a certain science at all. Another example might be uh, your insurance on your car. So you accept a 100% chance of a small loss each month paying the premium um, in exchange for not having a small probability for incurring a big loss if your car is destroyed or stolen, if you run it into a tree. And depending on your own net worth, that might make sense. Or it might not. You might really just be biased by a loss aversion that we know from psychology, that you feel a loss much more than you feel, a small, than you feel the similar gain. It hurts a lot more to lose $20,000 than you'll uh, be happy to, to gain $20,000. And that's helping the insurance company making money. Of course, there might be other factors. If you actually were extremely worried about your car because it was not insured, that might not be worth it anyway. Now, my car is not insured, but uh, that's because it's, uh, its value now that I've had it for five years is a lot less than when I bought it initially. So now the, the loss would be uh, not quite as significant as it was in the beginning. But if you're really wealthy, it might not make sense at all to have any kind of insurance. So that's the wisdom from Charlie Munger. You need to learn the mental models from the different disciplines and apply them to your decision making and your problems and see what's there, what's influencing it and what the probabilities might be and what the rational and objective 
correct decision for you would be in that given time. And you need to think through your problems and your decisions inversely, always invert. See it from the other side. Instead of asking, how do I get to A? You can ask, how do I not get to A? <laughs> and that'll give you some different answers that applies to the same problem. So don't be a one-legged man in an ass-kicking contest. <laughs> be the guy with two legs, it'll kick more ass. Now, I might absolutely have butchered these ideas here, but that's not the point. The point is that you think about this and you read it on your own and maybe it'll help you. It'll be a powerful tool for you going forward. It has been for me since I read this. It's one of the only things that I've read in a long time that's completely stuck with me and I do it with everything. Every time anybody asks me anything, I start down this road, go through all of the basic probabilities and see if there's any mental models that apply. Am I biased? Are they biased? You know what's going on. And if you want to know more about the history of probability and risk, I can also recommend you to pick up this one. It's called Against the Guards by Peter Bernstein. And that's about how humans figured out what risk is, how to try and measure it and the history of it. And of course, we can't entirely measure it, but, but we try anyway, right? We have degrees of belief, back to Keynes. So I'll do a few searches on Google and see if I can find some of the, the speeches that are central and that are in the book by Charlie Munger. He didn't write it himself. It was someone else put it together. He never really wrote anything to be published like that. And if I can find those speeches, I'll put the link in the description. You can read them for free. You can also pick up this book, which is rather expensive and unwieldy, <laughs> but, but pretty central. I think if you're not already doing what I described, you will probably... Uh, be much better off for reading it. So I hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you all next time if I work out the probabilities and think it makes sense to make a video. Thank you for watching. Take care.